what we're going to work on, we're going to work on uh, seeing some of the differences in Kosho. The differences between Koshiru, Karate, Gong Fu, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, and so on. Remember that the original intent of all martial arts systems were to be aware of the self in dealing with our environment and what is natural and what is not. Movement is to be natural. It always was intended to be, as told to me by Professor Mitose. Many of the things that we're going to do will contradict many of the karate movement. But what you must do is you must look to the source of things and see where those things first were created. Very first step is we're going to work with the basic concept of stance. Stance, or dachi, as we would say in, in Japanese, refers to a stable, stationary position. When we look at history, and we understand what the original teachers actually did teach, we will understand that the positioning was much more important than the individual stance. As we become fixated on our own motion or movement, we'll have a tendency to pay more attention to stationary things such as a stance instead of understanding our relationship to an opponent. This we call game, or positioning. Koshuru, my teacher told me that if a man comes to you because he's a coward, teach him to be a good coward first, meaning if he comes to you because he's upset because he runs from conflict, teach him how to run. Teach him how to run with dignity. Therefore, he is no longer a coward. Don't teach him fighting skills right away, simply because of the fact he is not capable of defending himself anyway. Once the man is skilled enough to defend himself physically, there is no need. His skills then have been developed as far as running well enough to where he does not need to hit or strike. Therefore, the inner confidence begins and the building of that begins. First, we will look at some of the stances and positions. In karate today, we'll see several different ways to stand or position ourselves. For instance, the Zen Kutsudachi, or the front stance. This can be taught in several different ways. Back leg is straight, front foot 45 degree angle. There is much controversy on how to throw a Zen Kuts. If, this is, if we take the front stance like so, some practitioners prefer a wider elongated stance. This is very good for muscular development of the body and the lower body. However, its origin comes from a shorter, short-range stance, which almost gives the appearance of what we would call Western boxing today. Matsumira, the founder of, or the one who actually began all training in Okinawa, utilized a front or zenkuts much like so. He believed that stability was in mobility. Again, to prove the point, Game, positioning, posture with an opponent is much more important. In Koshuru, we want to understand when you look at a stance, do not get fixated on the stance. Look at the things that create that position to where you understand what causes that movement to take place. Those of you that view the tape and are becoming students of Koshuru, these things are important to understand so that you do not get fixated on fancy movement, fancy technique. Instead, you're looking at natural laws and principles, how they apply to movement and technique. In the escaping arts, it is important to know how we move. One, the body follows the head. Any place that the head moves, the weight shift turns and, and moves with it. Therefore, our escape may take place. We will demonstrate some of this. Later, as you look at things, you will see how they by condensing the same theories and concepts, they will be related directly to your blocking, your maneuvering, and your striking arts. First thing we teach a student, we teach him to understand the octagon. This is very important. In your class structure, in your classes, you will be taught the octagon and the importance of it. However, as a beginning student, you will not fixate on that. You will end up fixated on hand technique or maneuver. What was most important to him is to understand that if an individual were to defend himself, he must understand timing, which timing we call hayoshi, and distancing, ma'ai. These things are very important to understand. That deals with your understanding of knowing when to move in order to position yourself or find proper game to an opponent who's trying to strike or hit. First, learn how to move on time, not just how to move. If you can do this, the blocking and the blocking technique is not necessary. It is not needed. For an example, 
if I understand it here with the eyes, and I can adjust my, my visual plane, I can move on time and much quicker. So what do I do is I learn to see without looking. Okay? An opponent strikes, therefore, I can block and maneuver myself to where the opponent cannot hit, cannot strike. No matter how he moves, at the same time, if I can eliminate my thinking in terms of defending against a punch, but deal with motion itself, the punch will never take place. This can be done in several different ways. My opponent starts to move, I can create an environment or a situation where the punch isn't going to take place, I don't have to block it. If you notice, the body mass is now back. The man can't take a strike. But at the same time, this tells me, by body position, which way he's going to strike next. I have his weight back, and his weight is off at an angle. This tells me the circle in which he's going to take. This also tells me that he's going to be springing up. If I spring up with him as he goes to hit, and I move slightly, base is taken off. Koshiru will have very magical qualities. No matter how a man strikes you or punches, you can always understand how to deal with him. Remember, too, Mitosi Sensei said this, that if there is a disconnection between Tori and Uki, or attacker and defender, then there are two heads. Once connection takes place, there is one. The body must melt at that time and blend. So if the man strikes, there is only one of us now. By learning sensitivity, you're feeling where the hand projects and where it takes place. I no longer want to be concerned with this side of his body because this is going to be past tense. The opponent now will rotate and hit again. Therefore, I can keep check his body posture and position. Koshiru, again, I will say, looks magical. It is not. It is a study of natural laws, of principles, but it is a study of motion. Where my opponent is now, he might turn to punch again. At this time, all I have to do is go with it, rotate, step slightly, and maneuver. In the study of Koshiru, we want to learn and we want to study postures, movement, motion. 12-6-3, very important. If my opponent is 12 feet, the octagon, as you see, is, is a pattern which tells us when to move in relationship to the dista distance that my opponent may be at. If he is 12 feet, this means I will move to the half left or half right. What determines whether I move to one position or the next depends upon where my weight is. If my weight, as it is now, is to the left, this means I will step to the half right of the octagon. At 12 feet, if no matter how a man strikes, whether he strikes with right or left, if he strikes, I step. The idea is to keep the body symmetrical and the posture in, in the proper angle in which you're moving. This way, if my opponent steps to turn and hit twice, and I move again, he will be where I was last. So I step again, my opponent now is directly behind me. Therefore, I know where to strike and know where to defend. Next movement of the octagon, six feet. At six feet, we move to the full left or full right of the opponent. If my weight is to the right, this means I will move to the left. In karate and martial arts today, unfortunately, what we do is we work techniques against a right punch or a left punch. This gives the advantage to the opponent. We look at motion. My weight is to the right, I move to the left. I, again, I turn the head and I move. I make motion. If I step again as he turns, again he will be directly behind me. Therefore, I place a kick or place whatever. This tells me where the opponent is or is not. As you work with the octagon, remember how important this is. The objective also in karate technique today, we will see how movement in motion is determined on how the individual is going to move, but not how the opponent is moving. They merely just look at a right punch or left punch technique and deal with it from there. 